Hello, 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 everybody. Happy Monday. How is everybody doing today? Let me just get situated here. Give me one second. Make sure I'm good to go. All right. Sounds like I'm good. Mic is good. All right, video. All right. Let me check all my stuff here. All right. Happy Monday. Welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube, where it's all about embroidery. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics. Definitely a fan favorite. Uh, super fun, sometimes easy, sometimes difficult type projects. Uh, of course, patches. One thing about patches is that everybody, no matter what genre, no matter what age, no matter where in the country or which country, what state, what city, okay, it does not matter. Uh, patches will forever, okay? If you have an embroider machine, even a sewing machine, right? Anything thread related, I guarantee you patches is going to be part of your business, part of your hobby, part of your recreation. All right, so today, I do want to talk about easy way to make patches. And when I talk about easy, okay, one of the uh, with limited equipment, okay, because of course there is no such thing as the easiest way. There is more efficient way, there's quicker way. But sometimes when you're limited with, with, with equipment, when you're limited with resources, all right, sometimes there's kind of little little way around stuff okay kind of maneuver away um just trying to see if i have my sample all right um i did want to i have the embroidery machines downstairs okay i did want to start uh videoing or going live downstairs too but my cable for my camera it doesn't go that low all right so i was trying to get something that went down low all right if anything i might just uh route uh, my internet down there and be situated like that. All right. But we're going to go into the details of patches. We're going to uh, look at some stores, some shops, because every, every week, no matter what, I'm always going to get the same question. And I also see it everywhere else in internet land. Okay. Is where do you buy your materials? What materials do you get? What do you need to start doing patches, all right? And really, the thing with patches, like you can be as creative as possible. Like if you're really in a crunch and you really have to kind of make something out of nothing, you could kind of get away with certain stuff, all right? So we'll kind of talk about some of the items that are good to have uh, and definitely just good to stock up in your kind of in your, um, and all of your inventory of stuff to have, okay? All right, um, one last thing about patches. When you sample, I know we sample a lot, I'm pretty sure everybody else, right? Like embroidery, it's all about sampling. Like before you start a big project or before you confirm with a customer, of course, you're gonna sample out. What I like to do, uh, anytime, I have a uh, anytime I have a sample of a customer, you could easily turn it into a patch, all right? Just because you have it doesn't mean, you know, you just toss it. You, either you can save it or you can just create a patch app something, all right? So um, just kind of some stuff that we're gonna talk about today, all right? So we got a jam-packed house today again, all right? It's Monday, super busy. I don't know about you, right? Of course, Mondays for some reason is like super crazy. So much stuff happening. Um, yeah, super, super crazy, all right? But we're here. We're going to learn embroidery stuff, all right? Uh, let me do a quick shout out here, Claudia. Claudio, sorry about that. Palmdale. Palmdale in the house. Barb, Minnesota. All right. Sal, North Cali, Bay Area. All right, Lee Colbert. Massachusetts, TMG in the house, Orlando, Daisy Benton, Georgia, Arios, 
All right. Patches. Kelly for Colorado. All right. Maryland, Ohio. Ariels, Omaha. Lisa Tucker, Waco, Texas. We got MM Customs. All right. Coyote Embroidery. All right. Good to have you here. Frank Valderrama, South San Diego. All right. That's what's up right here. All right. Let's get this party started. Uh, before we get started, just hit real quick. It's going to take like half a second. Just hit that like. Uh, let YouTube, let Facebook know that we are in the house today. Of course, Mondays is reserved 5 p.m. Pacific to whenever we finish. All right. Uh, we are going live this year, 2024. We are going live the whole half of the year. All right. So from January all the way to the end of June. We're going to go live every Monday. And then once June hits, okay, for us, that's when our uh, holiday season starts. All right. So we're going to have uh, a lot of crazy stuff happening for uh, holiday season. That's like our, our Super Bowl of of our business right there. Okay. That's where everything happens. Um, August, September, October, November, December. All right. Even though the holiday season, right, it's like November, December. But for us, it starts all the way in August. All right. So we need to start like June doing a lot of stuff. All right. All right. Oh, all right. We got more people coming in. All right. Glad to have everybody here today. Uh, just real quick. Let me pull up a website here. Okay. Uh, when we're talking about. Um, when we're talking about patches, all right, real quick before we get into it, all right, I'm going to talk about companies. There is a ton of companies, all right? If you have companies that you work with, you could leave it down in the in the comments um, because embroidery is all about doing research, all right? There is no such thing as the one company where you're going to buy all your stuff. All right. For the most part, a lot of companies, you can do that, but sometimes uh, people specialize in different types of stuff that we're going to talk about. All right. Uh, real quick, let me just make a quick announcement. Uh, announcement number one, reminder, we got the Mighty Hoops back here. Uh, free shipping. Uh, I have the information in the description. So if you're all about Mighty Hoop like we are, make sure you hit that uh, link up. Uh, promo code Romero. All right. And then we also got the candle thread. All right. Super, super nice, shiny thread, especially where, where, where we love to use it. The reason where we fell in love with it, right, where where actually my wife started using it and she was like, hey, we got to start going with this thread right here. It really started with the 3D puff because, of course, 3D kind of stands out and then it has that shine. Then when you have that light hitting it at certain angles. All right. It's game over. Game over, especially if you do a lot of like black on black thread. All right. Especially the black. All right. That's like our main thing right there. The black on black. It has like a certain shine. Super, super clean. All right. All right. Oh, man. All right. Let's get this party started. Let me see if my camera is good right here. All right. So uh, before we get into the digitizing and the software and all the information, let's talk over some locations where you can buy um embroidery or patch material right now patch material the base that's really like the main thing right your main your your main product for patches is the base so i'm pretty sure like 90 percent, right 99 percent of everybody they use tackle twill okay tackle twill you can buy it pretty much um, Ganold, Stalls, uh, Tool USA, and you could probably list 10 more other places. All right. Everybody has their own um, particular brand that they like to use. And really, the reason why people like different brands and the reason why there's different, I would say, is because of the shine. Like some companies have a, a, have a special shine, and sometimes you don't want a shine on your, on your patches. You want it to be more matte or more or more plain okay so different companies have a different shine 
And let's start with this one here. All right. Let's kind of switch up right here. All right. Of course, one of my favorite ones, and I'll show you uh, some literature that I have. All right. I met Ganold at uh, at the Impression Expo. Of course, they're always at the at the expos. All right, but I really got to talk to them for about good, I would say like 40 minutes. All right, because we went like piece by piece through everything. A lot of cool stuff. And like a lot of times you have so much options, right? So um let's say like right here, right? Let me go big on the big screen. All right. Let's say like right here on under fabrics. Right, they got fabrics, felty, cam canve, twilly, step. Right, you got all this stuff right here, and sometimes when you're looking at it through the website, you can't really tell what's what. Right, this is like the assortment. Actually, uh, I just ordered um, I just ordered fabric. I got this one. This is like the classic one, the twilly. Okay, this is what I just got today. Um, right now we're kind of sampling. We're doing a lot of sampling. Uh, we want to nail it down to like exactly what we want. Uh, usually we do sampling like every other year just to see what's out there. Okay, but we got this one here. Hold on, what was it? I just had it right here. The, the assortment, the sample box. Okay, so you could get a sample box. Uh, as soon as I get it, maybe I make a video and I'll show you guys um, what comes in the sample box. All right. So as of right now, it's about 43 bucks. All right. So I'll kind of make a video and show show you guys what's inside. All right. But you can kind of see um, they have like the canvas and uh, the felty, right? That's like felt. So they got like cool names to go with it. All right. Uh, but for the most part, Twilly, okay, very popular one. Uh, for the longest, all right, for the longest, we've used this one here, uh, Twill USA. All right, this is like super classic right here. They got like the, uh, they got all this stuff right here. But for the most part, Sports Twill, okay. And if you need like custom letterings and all that, they do all that stuff. Custom applique. If you're working with like a team and you're going to need a lot, a lot, a lot of the same design, of course, you wouldn't want to hand cut this, right? You can just um, order them already cut. Um, but yeah, sports tool. All right. One thing about, one thing about poly twill or tackle twill, they have different names. So here you can see it right here. They also say also known as tackle twill and poly twill. Depending what day of the week it is, usually I call it tackle twill. And sometimes for some reason I'll call it poly twill. All right. Um, but the thing with with uh, with twill USA, okay, uh, they do have a, a an extra shine to it, but you also have the option of sew only. Okay. So if it's sew only, very price. The price goes down a lot, all right? Because you don't have all that extra backing. You don't have all that the the fancy bells and whistles on this one. All right. But as you start adding backing, so uh, materials to make it stick, then the price can go higher, all right? And then they have it where you could just heat press it. You don't even have to stitch on it. All right. Where it says uh, heat press only. All right. It's all about doing research, seeing what works for you. All right. Trust me, I've bought everything you can think of, especially from here, from Tool USA, just testing stuff, all right? Because once you go live, once you offer something to your customer, you want it to be something that you're going to go with and something that you're going to have in stock all the time. All right. Um, let me see. Oh, actually, let me show you guys. So let me turn on my other camera real quick. All right. So I was saving a lot of uh, this information when I was going to do the video on the Impression Expo. 
All right, but time's just been so crazy. I haven't had time to do my video for the impression show yet. All right, so of course I got it here. Let me pull it up. Oh, let me see it. Bam, right there. All right, so let me show you guys some cool stuff right here. All right, this is some cool stuff that I got uh, at the impression show. So of course, Ganold. They got a lot of cool stuff, all right? We'll talk about this right here. Of course, this is the foam. But, um, so here, when you see everything on the website, you really don't have an idea of what's what, right? Uh, you could read the description. You kind of have an idea of what's what. But here, we also have kind of like brochure type where you see like the color. You could fill it. You kind of get a... a slight sample of what they have of course the colors right you can match colors and a cool thing even before i talked to them uh at the impression show they actually called me a while back and they had asked me if i was interested in any of the samples all right so i've been checking out samples so they've are they've They've mailed me samples, all right? So this is kind of like what made me really want to go with with uh, Ganold, all right? This is the Twilly here, all right? So as I'm filling it, it has like a certain uh, fabric feel, all right? Real, real nice right here, all right? So they got that. They got the canvas. So if you are interested, this is with any company, right? This doesn't just have to be with um, with Ganold, but just in general, like any company that you that you want to work with or you want to get information, you could either call them or you could buy samples and and just do your research. So that way, whatever fits you, okay? Because there's times where certain projects, um, I might go with one company for a certain feel. And another project might go with another company. All right. And then just this right here is just, it's really not uh, patch related, but just in general. This one was the cool part of what when Of course, I do a lot of uh, 3D puff. And I actually got samples of the six millimeter. All right. So you can see. This is what we usually use. Three. Now the six millimeter, it doesn't come in dense, so it's um, so it's a, it's like your regular phone, and then they broke down, they kind of broke it down, uh, when you want to use the regular dent the regular phone, and when you want to use the dense phone. So that was good information that we got, but you can see like the three versus six, right? It's like double the size, and then this is the four that I might start testing stuff with right here, right? This is dense also, so you can see four millimeter dense. But this is what we work with, game changer right here. All right, 3D puff that's dense, super game changer. All right, but the big thing here, what I wanna kind of show you is sample, 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 all right? With patches, you're gonna be sampling all day. All right, you're going to be sampling all day with patches. So you want to make sure you're getting something that you're going to want to work with. All right, so let me close this up right here. All right, so good information right there. Bam, bam. All right, how you doing, Cindy? Good to have you here. All right. We just got started right now. I was just showing some of the companies that I've used before. All right, G-Town in the house. Kingsbury Crafts, Remington, Washington. All right, Martha from Virginia, Luray, Virginia. Ruth, Austin, Texas. We got DC, loving music, music melodies. All right, 
Cool, cool. All right. We got Jesse. How you doing, Jesse? Good to have you here. Man, all right. Let's get let's get started right here. All right. DJ Kev. North Carolina. Juva. Pennsylvania. Marisa, how you doing? SoCal in the house. All right. Man, let's get started right here. All right. Um Uh, a lot of the stitching, I'm actually going to, I'm going to, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to stitch some of this stuff out. I do have samples here that I want to show you guys. All right, but let's go, let's go on the software right here. Bam, right here. Look at this right here. All right, so let's close some of this stuff down right here. All right, so we have a cool looking patch right here. Or design. Hold on. Bam, look at that right here. All right, let's check out the size. Of course, every time we look at a patch, we need to start asking questions, right? And that's all about embroidery, about digitizing. When we're starting from ground zero, we're like investigator style right now. All right, so we need to ask questions. We want to, let's see, size. Okay, this is a uh, height, three inches. So close to three inches because it's like almost touching the ends. And then width, it's about four inches, a little under four inches wide. All right, so we are a little on the big side. Uh, one thing about patches, once we go full coverage, then it is very, it's very stitch intense meaning high stitch count, all right? Because if we were just to do a full, let's see, uh, if we were just to do a full, a full, just a full fill, all right, if we were just to do a full fill right now, so we should do this way. Let me just see how much stitches, if like no design, just a full fill. All right, hold on. Let's see, bam, with the underlay. Let's say we go edge wrong with a tatami, bam. All right, we're looking about nine, 9,000. Okay, 9,000 stitches, the minimum. This is the minimum uh, if you were to do a full stitch, right? Like, let's say you had no, no design on your stitch, all right? Now, if we were to put, let's duplicate that. Turn that into a satin border. All right. Uh, satin board uh, borders for um, patches. Let me see. Uh, take out all spacing special. What I like to go is four. If I'm using the embroider machine, I'm going four millimeters. All right. So it looks pretty big here, all right, but that's cool. Reason why I like um, four millimeters and I want a bigger, I don't like it too thin, all right, for a couple of reasons. Let me tell you why. Um, let's go big here. One, I wanna have the option of being able to stitch it with a post bed machine. And if you have it too thin, all right, it becomes all weird. Um, like sizing it up. Next thing is that you lose like the, the strength of your sand stitch when it's very small, like you can get uh, like a straight line starts to like curve around. All right, so I like to kind of uh, for width, width and, and let me tell you what I'm gonna do. What I like to do is make it dense. So double zigzag underlay with an edge run and I'll show you why. Okay, I'll show you why edge run, bam, bam, right there. All right, so right now we're looking at a minimum with this with this 
no design on top of it, right? We're just doing a flat. We're looking at 11,000 stitches at the very minimum. So just without even doing anything crazy, we already know it's gonna be uh, dense, intensive, right? Of course, there's ways to minimize the, 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 the amount of stitches, right? We could just remove it, just use the fabric that we were looking at as our base, okay, as our base. But sometimes, you know, you have so many different colors that you need to put all the colors there. All right. Um, I made like my own version of this patch. Uh, I wanted to make it very simple. I'm actually going to share it. Give me by after this, after this um, live, I'll post the one that I just made right now. All right. I literally just took it off the embroidery machine right now, right, which I'm going to show you guys. But let me go ahead. Let me show you my version of what I did, all right? And then I'll kind of talk about stuff here, all right? But let's go two space, that's what I called it right here. All right, this is my version right here. All right, you can kind of see how I changed the names of stuff. So I put my name, my company's name, Romero Threads Embroidery San Diego, all right? Then we have the rocket. And then the earth, I just made like, so it could look like earth, right? Green land with blue sky. All right, so I just made my own version. And let's see here, when we're looking at this, uh, stitch count, if you look at the bottom left-hand corner, all right, you can see the stitch count, which is a crazy number, it's 21,000. 21,000 stitches, all right, so it's, All right, 21,000, which is crazy, all right? But let me show you how this stitched out. And I just took it off the, the, the embroidery machine right now, all right? So let me show you. Let's see, bam. So I think you get a good view. All right, so I have it on this paper. I'm gonna, of course, some of you already know what's so special about this paper, right? This is the secret of making it, of making the patches so easy, right? As soon as I punch this out, this thing is ready to go. All right. So let me see if I get a little closer. Here. A couple of things I want to like talk about here. All right. But just... then the back, you kind of see how. This thing is ready just to get punched out, All right? I'll punch it out on my other camera so we could do, see it together, All right? Uh, here on with this one, this is a very simple, easy background. So really, it, it wasn't very nest. It wasn't like 100% necessary to do it like this. Of course, we could marrow it. Um, I'm still working with my marrow machine. Uh, I think second half of this year, I'm going to push more videos showing my marrow, all right? So I have the, the marrow machine that does the Velcro on the back. So I do the patch, put the Velcro on the back, and then stitch it out, all right? So um, something like this, easy, easy with the, with the marrow machine, right? But there are certain designs where a marrow machine might not work, all right? So here. My bad. Let's go to the software. All right. And then real quick, I'm just seeing this question right here. Uh, loving music melodies. So this software that I'm using is Wilcom. Wilcom um, Embroidery Studios 4.5. All right. And let me see. Then Martha, what is the paper on the patch? All right, we'll talk about that right now. Let me pull it up actually. Okay, I didn't. Let's go back to this website that I was at. Thank you for reminding me. That was actually part of my topic that I had here. So here, Ganold. All right, we go. 
right here, backings and toppings. You go to patch backings. Right, they have everything you need right here. Right. And really, I think I've I've bought like all this stuff. I've tested everything. And there's some stuff that's good for us. Everything has a purpose depending on what's your project. All right. Uh good thing about Ganold, they have like so much right here, like uh tips, training, and shows. They have like a lot of information about their product stuff. But what I have is right here, Ultra Solvy Water Soluble. So they have it in different sizes. Okay. Um, so right here. So what you're looking for, when you're looking for Solvy, because you always see the name Solvy everywhere. There's different. This one here is the Ultra Solvy. And what makes it Ultra is this here, the thickness, 80 mils. All right. That's what it is. Um, one thing that I'll tell you, all right, very common is people get very creative. Uh, they either use uh, trash bags or they'll use the painters, uh, the painters uh, drop, the, the, the plastic that they use for to protect the flooring. Um, I believe, I, I can't remember if, it, if it's 40 mils or 80 mils also. All right, so people get creative. Me, I just keep it basic. I just stay with uh, anything that's embroidery wise. I just keep, I just buy like embroidery stuff for embroidery stuff, All right? It's like the same thing with, with puff. People uh, use other types of puff, okay? For the most part, we like to use the, the dense puff. It just keeps everything nice and tight. All right. All right, good question right there. Uh, let's go back to... All right, and then I'll get to some questions right now. You guys got some good questions, which I appreciate that. All right. Um, and all right. Hey, Cedar, how you doing? Nashville in the house. All right, bam, bam. Just looking real quick here. All right, I think we're doing good. All right. Um, and then, Santi, what settings for the border? All right. So I, th I think I answered your question on this one when I talked about, bam, this border right here. All right. Uh, so size, four millimeters. Underlay, I like a double zigzag with an edge run. And let's see if that's what I used here. Double zigzag edge run, um, four millimeters. Yep, that's what I used. And then we'll talk about this one here, right? What type of permanent backing do you use for the patch? What well, holds best? All right, actually, let me talk about that right now. All right, so what I used to use for the longest was adhesive using the hat heat press. Okay, uh, we use that for a good, good amount of years. But this year we're, we're transitioning to the Velcro. So we're putting, uh, I have my hat downstairs, of, but um, has my sample, but we're using Velcro and just stitching it on top of, just stitching it straight on it with the post bed machine. So those two ways, but we've done the, the adhesive for the longest. And just to answer that question also, because let me see, you had a two part question right there. What holds the best? Um, if you're using adhesive, oh, hold on. I'm using two computers and then I, I get confused sometimes with my computer. Uh, Tool USA, what I use for the longest, if you are going to use um, adhesive, all right. Um, products they have the heat press adhesive all right um, then I'll, I'll give you like my two cents on on using adhesive all right because there are some 
some things to kind of some lessons learned that we had a lot. This one here is the strongest one. This P600 5 mil. That's the strongest one you can get. All right. They got the other stuff. Um, yeah, I really haven't messed with this other stuff, but this one here. Okay. Of course, I anytime I, I had any questions, I always called. Um, I'm just so used to calling companies because they, they have all the information. So I would ask them, hey, what's the strongest thing you have? All right. But let me give you my two cents on um, adhesive, okay? Using the heat press. There are certain sizes that that you might struggle with, right? Because like certain um, ovals, right? When you have an oval that's a little big, that the hat heat press might not get like the, the ends. Usually like the lateral sides, it's real good with the, with the heat press. But once you're going on the high side or anything on the crown, okay, uh, you might have to do a double run where you, where you kind of adjust the hat so it could hit certain areas that it didn't catch, but it's all practice, right? It's all practice. All right, let's go back to the digitizing now. All right, so let's go to this. Let's go here. All right, a couple things that I want to show here. Um, let's say for this for this background, okay? I'm using this. I'm using this sample here more as a just as like as a template. All right, a lot. Of, there's a lot, a lot of details here, right? Like you have down here these little white wavy things here. All right, we have the star or the sun something like that that no, these are the stars right all little details that you have here on the spaceship okay this is what i want to talk about here is on the spaceship when we have when we have a design like this this is where we have questions we got to start asking questions here and that is what can we keep and what is going to be sacrificed, right? What's gonna be, what can we afford to omit in the design, okay? Because not every design you're gonna be able to do it like picture perfect. There's gonna be some stuff that doesn't make sense. All right, for example, let's see, if we measure this and a lot of this is all based on the size, right? So right here, this little, this little design, this little part here, is 0.3 millimeters, all right? Way too small for a sand stitch. And if we're just going run stitch, right? Let's say we're just doing a run stitch like this. Well, let me change the color a bit so we can see it. Let's say we're just doing a run stitch like this, right? It looks like it fits. The thread, if we're using a uh, 40 weight thread, Actually, I knew this answer, and I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, but how thick is a thread? If we were to measure thread, how thick would that thread be? Because um, by looking at this, it might be even thicker, right? If anybody knows what's the thickness of thread, all right, I, I have an idea, but I don't want strike out with the wrong answer but i know some people know that answer all right um if we go we could go just straight run stitch right all the way through uh another question would be what is so significant what is so significant that we can keep as satin stitch so something that's bold enough that we could just keep it as sand stitch, right? So let's say this front part, right? Maybe this front part, either sand stitch or a fill stitch maybe. So if we measure this, and this is all questions we're answering based off measurement, right? So 3.4, right? So it's good, all right. Are we gonna keep these windows? And if we do keep these windows, are we gonna have to superimpose them 
so they look like windows, right? We not we might not have the the luxury of being able to create this little small box, this little small box. Sometimes we might have to combine the windows so they could look just like one window, right? Or they could look like multiple windows. Or this area here. I think if if you're designing for a genre that you know or an industry that you're familiar with, you know what to omit. Okay. You kind of have an idea like, hey, you know what? This this piece of detail right here um, is not a make or break detail. All right. So this part of the wings, right? This is a little bigger. We could keep this. Right. This is something we could keep. This one, this little tiny one, right? 0.37. Right, might not be a sand stitch unless we make it a little bigger. I would say uh, to to have a sand stitch, we want it to be uh, 1.5, like the smallest, 1.25. If we really have to, you could always go smaller, but you just you 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 introduce the possibility of thread breaks, uh, shredding your thread shredding because it's so tight in there. So we kind of want to have an idea of what we keep. All right, now looking at this background, right? Looking at the background, we have the sky up here. And then let's just call this the bottom part. Uh, let's just call that a planet, okay? We can even call it Earth. That's the way I, how I saw it when I did mine. I just kind of put mine as uh, the green as the planet, the sky as the the sky as space. All right, so the big question is, what's going to go first, right? So that's all, that's the important questions that we get here, all right? Important question that we always got to ask ourselves is what's going first? Is Are we going planet, sky, space shuttle, and then this gray border background, okay? So... I'm going to kind of give you a second here to look at this design. And if you were if you were designing this, let me take out the grids. If you were looking, if you were doing it, all right? Are you going planet, sky, gray background, and then I'll I'll play I'll kind of show you, and then text, because I put text also. Of course, we kind of, I'm pretty sure we have, we're all in agreement what goes last, right? At the very minimum, we should at least see what goes last, right? Last, I'm, I'm going to say is the border. Okay, especially if you're doing it the way I did it here with the with the Solvi. All right, so let me see. Let me pull up some right here. All right, Jesse, sky, planet, space. Sky, planet, space, ship. Okay, ship last. Okay. Of course, there's no right or wrong answer, right? It's all everybody. You give this to 10 digitizers, you'll get 13 different designs. All right. I don't know how that would work, but it would work like that. All right, Nate, how you doing? Planet, shuttle, sky. Okay. Cindy, sky first. All right. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. Gilbert. Sky. Planet. Border. Shuttle. All right. I'm going to push play on mine. All right. And then. Let me see. Um, Cindy. This is always something also on my mind also. All right, to keep things from puckering, what would you do? 
there's always the theoretical answer, right? Starting from the center, working your way out. Uh, sometimes when I don't want to follow that rule, I'll just stitch it out. And if it does become a problem, then I'll go back and follow the rules. But sometimes, sometimes you don't have to, um, sometimes you could break rules. Like if it's not puckering, right, we can move on and we can say, hey, we could get away with that. All right. All right. Let me push play on mine. All right. Kind of show you my my version of this one. Of course, I made it a whole lot simpler because there's a lot of details here that, you know, you can do it. Maybe we added a, another a day, right? Because look, just on this, on the wing or whatever this part's called, we have like three shades. We have the white, the lighter gray, the darker gray, right? That's some intense stuff right there. All right, but let's go here. Let's go mine. So let me push play. Probably gonna play fast. Oops, all right. So I did the planet first. Right. So let's slow this down a bit. I got it. And then it'll stop when it cuts. And then I'll get to this question right here. There's a good one here. All right. Any tips from preventing brim of hat from rubbing on machine? Yep, I, I got some good information on that. Uh, let me just push play here. All right, so, and then we're going to talk about some, some lessons learned that I had. Okay, because every project you do, you're always going to have a lesson learned, even if it's something so minor. Um, everything is a lesson learned. So you can see how I had my tatami underlay with, a, with an underlay, and then I'm going at a 45 degree, right, 45 degree angle here. You kind of see like my tracing kind of matches matches the design so I didn't do too much of the uh, the overcompensation all right so let's speed it up a bit all right bam and then it's gonna close up up here all right now, I'm gonna do the sky next. Uh, one thing, anytime we have two objects butting up to each other, okay, this was like a big uh, topic that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. It's all about overlaps, okay, overlaps. Um, you can see how this the green is under the sky and then the sky is gonna be under well, well, let me push play and then you'll see. All right, did this part first, All right? Same, same underlay. Now the underlay, this is what keeps the shape intact. If we don't put underlay, you, your 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 shapes are gonna start warping. All right, so we put that, bring that out. I could have walked it to the next portion, but I put a cut right here. Cut here, start to the next one. And then let me show you. All right, you can kind of see my overlaps right here, right? The blue, the blue is overlapping the green, right? Because if we put them side by side, we're going to get a gap. All right, so bam, right there. Okay, so we get the overlap. And you can kind of see how my my object is is overlapping this gray area that's going to go on top of it too, All right? So you can see like the anticipation that I have on my next object, All right? Let that stitch out. So see right here. And it's going to go over so you can kind of see how it kind of overlaps into the gray area. Bam. All right. Stops there. Now, next. Okay. 
Reason why I didn't do the shuttle third, because I have a border on that shuttle and I wanted to go over this gray area. So let's go here. Bam. So you see. Same thing like my my underlay. So so you could kind of see how my underlay. All right. I, this is like my template underlay right here. All right. It's my favorite one. Is my tatami single tatami with a edge run. All right. So you can kind of see how I'm gonna overlap this blue here. All right. So a lot of this is just the details here. All right. So you can see how my overlap here. I need more overlap. Just because this blue is pooling, I'm going to get more pool that area. So you can see how my overlap is going to work right here. All right here. Same thing on the sides. Because on this this design, let me see. Yeah, you can see I'm going at a at a 15 degrees on the opposite side. So 165. 165 degrees. All right, so let's speed this up a bit. Bam. All right, finishes right there. Okay. So now, okay, this was kind of like, uh, this is where you kind of read my mind, Cindy, when you said about puckering. All right, when I, when I, sequenced it like this that one was on my mind is it gonna is it gonna kind of pucker or is it gonna start warping inside this middle part where the shuttle's at okay but i did want to leave the shuttle for last because i want to put the border on top of it okay that's why i left it for last but sometimes the only way to find out is to stitch it out okay and then if you have issues then you can kind of adjust as you go all right, and then this Y part. All right, so just, same settings. Okay, I'm pretty much using all my same settings. The Tommy with an edge run. All right, and then you can kind of see uh, overlaps here, and I'll tell you why. You could kind of see my overlap here, but I do want to show you a good sample that I have here. This one here, it has a potential for a lot of gapping here, like in between here, because you have you have your shapes kind of being cut up in different areas. All right. So we have it like this looking so far. And then this one is the perfect response. I should have actually answered with this one from the beginning. Yep, global underlay from the beginning. All right, I, th this is what I would do if something was shifting. I would add, sometimes I don't like adding a global underlay because you could, uh, the, let's say like on the white thread, sometimes uh, certain threads show through certain, certain, uh, certain color threads show through other lighter threads. So sometimes I'm not always using global underlay. All right, so now, we have like the main portion of the patch right here. Now it's all about the details. All right, so let's slow this down. And this is the part of the black area where kind of got to decide what do I want to keep? Okay, what do I want to keep? And really, the longer you kind of work with it, the more details you can add. All right, you can always add details. Uh, sometimes you just want it to make it look uh, to the point where it looks like the the shuttle. All right, but here, kind of show you. So let me pause it here. So instead of having like five different windows, I kind of combine two of the windows. So it looks like one big window right here. All right. Here, I kind of made it as a, as a fill. I, I could have put uh, underlay here. So it doesn't look like there's underlay. And you'll kind of see it on the stitch out. Still look good. But here, so you can see areas where I put, where I did use 
sand stitches and areas where I just used a run stitch. All right. Then after the live, I'm going to put this file for download so you could kind of follow along. And if you got the time, if you want to stitch it out, all right, it is 20,000 stitches, all right? So, but there are some good learning uh, information here, especially looking at the, looking at the, at the designs when they come together and they butt up e against each other. When everything lines up, that's where you know a design's good to go. All right, so I just put a border just to kind of give it the shape of the of the of the shuttle. All right, because just the the way it was designed just by itself, the amount of detail that it had, all right? Uh, for embroidery, it's a lot of stuff just for embroidery by itself. Okay, so sometimes you just gotta decide what do you wanna keep? What do you wanna lose? Like what's the important parts, right? So, bam. So all that black, the black details was all in one shot. So there was no trims, okay, uh, in between there. All right, so actually so far we only have one, two, three, four, five trims so far all right all right and then uh, all right hold on all right let's continue here now okay we got the most of the, the the big part of the design here now I'm going to put the text, all right? I got a lot of information to talk about the text. So let's talk about this text right here. All right, so this one here on Will, this is just a uh, keyboard font right here. This one's called uh, Serif 1 on Wilcom. So the reason why I like this, this one here is uh, the size is six millimeter, the height. Uh, six millimeter. The reason why I like it because it's very small text friendly. So you can see how the serifs, they follow the same direction as the regular stitches. All right. So we're not, it's not changing angles as we stitch. All right. So it's very small. All right. So after here's a cut. Then let's speed it up a tad bit. Threads. Okay. And then embroidery. All right, let's speed it up. Bam, bam, bam. All right, cuts. Goes to the next one. Bam, San Diego. Bam. All right. Now. Now we get to the main part, all right? Now we get to the main part, and let me go big on this one here. What I want to show you, I'm actually going to record it. Uh, actually, not today, because I got to do last minute thing. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to record this, uh, constructing the patch, all right? From beginning to end. All right, so in a bit, we'll kind of break it so you can kind of see how it looks. Um, but this part here, this is the part where you start taking it off the machine and doing all this other stuff, all right? So let me see how I set it up. So right now, it's stitched it out. Right now, what it's going to do, it's going to make a cut stitch. So it's going to stitch on top of this, and it's going to show me exactly where to cut. Of course, you could kind of tell where to cut because you could kind of just cut around the edges. But you put a uh, you put a cut stitch here, bam. 
So I colored it purple. You can kind of see. All right. Now, when you see this cut stitch, look at this. It looks like it's all the way inside, right? It looks like it's all the way inside. But in reality, by the time it stitches out, it's stitching it right on the edge. Okay, so of course, embroidery is not what you see is what you get. And the reason why I know to put it here, right? It's not that I'm a genius or anything. It's just I did it. I did a sample stitch out and it came out all the way. It came out too short. All right. It came out too short. So, of course, I'm going to adjust it and I'm going to add whatever adjustments I need to put. All right. So that's how I know to go this wide. Usually, for the most part, um, your your cut stitch is literally around the edges. But this one, just based off the angle, a lot of it is based off the angle that we're that we're running this fill stitch at. All right. But you can see here. So here, I take it off the machine. I'm going to cut it. And then I put the next one. All right. And then you'll see it on the video that I'm going to play. Then I make the next run stitch. All right. This run stitch is, is the placement stitch. It's going to tell me where to place my patch. All right. It's going to tell me where to place my patch. And then. Once it's placed, now you put the sand stitch here. All right, now everything closes up. Now you can see here I start with a zigzag stitch as an underlay. And really the reason why I'm doing this is so my patch and my plastic could kind of uh, combine together. All right. So you can see it here. And then I put a double. Zigzag, just so I could lock in. And one thing about uh, using the the soluble backing, what I've noticed, whatever millimeters of sand stitch you put, it's gonna make it a little smaller, just because you really don't have any cutaway anymore, because you cut it off, right? You cut it, so now the sand stitches might get a tad bit smaller. So something that you're used to seeing um, at four millimeters. So right now I have the sand stitch set at four millimeter. Really, it's going to close it in a little tighter. So it might end up like at 3.5, right, which is a cool size. And then here it just finishes all the way out. All right. Then, bam. All right, cool right there. And then what I want to show you, let me go ahead and show you. Let me turn on this camera right here. Then I'll get, if you have any questions, I'll get to the questions in a bit. Let me just, oh, get my camera on. All right, hold on, battery's about to die. Let me change this battery. I left it on while we're talking here. Give me one second. I'll, answer, I'll look at some questions right now as I'm changing this battery right here. All right, let me see. Bang. All right. So yeah, let me get back to this question right here. And then this is a good question right here. Robert, do you digitize then remove overlaps or digitize around what would overlap? Okay, perfect, perfect question. So there's a lot of questions that you have here in the chat that I think about, right? But if I don't write them down, I totally forget. All right, so I did think about this question earlier. All right, so do you digitize them remove overlaps or digitize around what? Okay, so let's let's talk about overlaps, all right? So move this here. 
So here, let's say this part here, right? This green. This green was the first was the first object that we stitched out, right? So really, this green we have. This is the one that could be the over that could be uh, overcompensated, right? So if we push H. It would make sense since this one's going first and that we're going to digitize and we're going to stitch on top of it. It would make sense to make this one as the bigger one. Right. So if I if I'm going to over exaggerate here. But if I have to pull this design more up here. Right. It makes more sense because you're not going to see how far I go up. Right. So this one I like to when I'm doing my when I like to when I'm covering my overlaps. I like to overlap the bottom part, make that one bigger. So this one went first. The blue sky went second. Okay. But you could start seeing here how I'm already making it bigger where the gray is going to be. So you can kind of see this purple line here. So by the time I do this one, I could do the whatever is on top, I'm, I'm digitizing it normal. Whatever's on bottom, I'm making it bigger than what it's really supposed to be. So that's compensating uh, for the gap. Okay. I actually have a good sample here because really, here with the white one. So when I did my first sample, all right, I was getting gaps here between with the white and the border. Because if I see, if I look at my border here, I'm very, very small. I'm at 1.5 millimeters, right? My column. So let me select that again. So my border on my space shuttle, it's very tiny. There's not too much room for me to cover gaps, right? It has to be, it pretty much has to be spot on at 1.5, very tiny. Uh, sand stitch. So here in this situation, my white portion. So now I selected my white portion. I go to my pool comp. Okay. And look at my pool compensation. Is that 0 0.70? 0 0.70. So if you multiply that by two, because it's on your both sides, I'm adding 1.4 millimeters extra. So 0.7 on each side, right? And how did I come up with that 0.7, all right? So I got a good representation here for you. All right, hold on, let me, let me put this camera back to normal. I just changed the battery right now. Give me one second. So I do appreciate that question because gaps, that's really what makes embroidery difficult, right? Or digitizing difficult. There's two things that I think makes digitizing difficult and what makes people not want to do it is two things. It's either gaps, pool compensation, or sequence, sequencing it. All right, because I think everything else is pretty much straightforward and digitizing but it's those two all right so you see this shuttle all right now picture it without everything in the middle all right picture it without everything in the middle just think of hold on bam Save this, hide others. All right, just think of this right here. All right, so if we wanted to see what is the sweet spot of pool compensation, right? Sometimes, all right, and I wanted to, I did this exercise here to kind of illustrate. Um, Kind of like my train of thought here. All right, 
me show you guys this. Let's go to camera two. Bam, right here. All right. So here, this is kind of the best way because I could talk about it. Right. I could talk about it by talking about it. But the best thing is to show you with actual stitch outs. Okay, hold on. Let me get let me get something flat right here. All right. This is the way that I like to learn, like through actual stitch outs. Let me see if you're going to be able to see. All right, you can't see it too good, right? Because it's kind of dark here. Let me see if I pick up the. Add some light. You can't really see it too, too much, all right? But here, actually, my drawing is, hold on. Give me one sec. Oh, yeah, it's like this. Couldn't figure out what was top or bottom. Oh, yeah, now, now it makes sense. All right, so on this one, let's see if you could see. All right, so on this one, number one, this is with zero pool compensation. So you see how I how I changed it to 0.7? This one here is with zero. So you can see the gaps, right? Let me see if you can see the gaps. Should be able to see the gaps. Okay. Let's see. Try zoom in. Yep, you can see the gaps right there. Perfect, right? All right. With a simple setting, all right. This next one is your standard, whatever. Uh, will comp comes with 0.17. You can't see it too much here, but there's little minimum pull compensation. And I'm just doing the pull comp on the white on the white portion. Okay. Then here, this one, this third one, 0.3, which has started closing up, but it doesn't close up. 100%. And then here, I went with the 0.7 completely closed up. All right. And really, it's um, we got a lot of breaks, like a lot of um, different shapes, right? It's not like a circle or a square where everything is just a perfect shape. This is kind of like an odd shape right here. Right. So right here for me, the the sweet spot with a small border was a 0.7. All right. So this one here, super, super useful and kind of visualizing settings. Okay. All right. Now let's talk. Let me show you the file right here all right bam all right cool thing about this one and i'll show you in a video when i when i stitch out this bit this when i stitch it out tomorrow the cool thing about this one here all right this is what makes this project so cool is that we could just punch this out all right we punch this out all right and it looks super clean of course, if you get anything that's kind of anything on the side, right? if you get any stragglers of thread, like right here, I got a little loopy one right here. That's right. There's always one, one or two, right? This one's easy with the lighter, right? We got this little tie in, tie off, okay, easy cut. And then this one, I just with the seam, seam ripper. Just take this one off, right? Cool little size. Um, so what I was saying on the four millimeters, the reason why I like it, so you can see I got a good size here 
So if I want to put it on a hat using the post bed machine, okay, good to go. And one thing that I'm looking at for right here is just the gaps, right? I'm trying to see if there's any gapping. So we're good with the gaps. Okay, and then we look at the space shuttle, right? So from a distance, so if we're seeing it from right here, right? Definitely looks like a space shuttle, right? So I have enough details to make sure it looks exactly like what I was looking for right here. All right, text-wise, let me see it from right here. So here, I'm probably like, the camera is literally like two hands, all right? I'm like measuring it, two hands. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty close here, actually. We even zoom in more. All right, so text, let me see, lining up pretty good. All right, looks good. And then I'll, I'll talk about one thing that I've uh, noticed with text. Okay, because of course patches, it goes like hand in hand with text. Text always plays a big role. Um, all right, cool. You know, let me get back right here. All right. Cool. Let's talk about. Let's talk about text. Hold on, unhide all. All right. Control Y. Okay, all right. Kind of wrap it up with this one here, right? Because this here is important. Actually, let's go with this one here. Let's delete this. So text, right? Text always a big, big important feature for for patches. So let's say uh, Romero threads. Romero threads. All right. So I'm here on my keyboard fonts. All right. Serif. So you could see like the sample that they used here. They're using a serif. See like the font that they use. So I try to find something that's kind of similar. So if you look at the T, right? If you look at this T right here, but let's see, serif one. It's pretty good. Um, let's go with six millimeters and then create text. Oops, create text. And right there, right? And what I want to do, I want to match it so it says like ready, grape, or, or yeah, red, re, ready, grape, Oswald. All right, put it down here. And what I need to use is the any shape. Okay. Of course, you could use other ones, but I just like any shape so I have more control. Um, H two is the reshape, and then I just put a circle right down in the middle. All right, let me put back this grid right here. And then let me kind of All right, bam, right there. Right. Then you like kind of line it up the way you want it. All right. 
And then let's say where I put San Diego here, I put S A N. Oops. No, I didn't want that. Make a new one. Hold on. Let's make a new one. San. Six millimeters, bam. Great text. All right. Click on it again. We could turn it. Actually, we could turn it, but I'm not going to turn it yet because I want to put a free line, any shape, H, and then flip it here. You can see 90 degrees. Bam. Bam, H, good. All right, and then if you want to kind of like uh, adjust the spacing uh, by letter, I think I use six. Right, so make it a little tighter just to avoid any any jumps. But if you want anything to be closer, okay, you can still adjust it by selecting these nodes. So we can move these around the path. Same thing. Same thing with the N by itself. All right. Everything is just finding the little sweet spot. All right, now very important here is little small so here settings right settings usually usually the software is gonna lead you in the right direction all right it's gonna give you the good settings it's gonna give you settings that you need for certain situations all right but once we start going into smaller lettering we got to tweak these settings around a bit, okay? Because now we're like in small text world. So some stuff that I like to change. So underlay, of course, I always want to keep underlay as much as possible just to make my, um, my lettering, you know, crisp and straight. But here, the length, I'll change this one. I'll change it from anywhere from 1.5 to 2 millimeters. Okay. Um, I'll see right now what I used. Uh, and then one that I like to use, pool comp. Okay. So standard 0.17, standard. Let me go big screen. Sorry about that. Uh, 0.25. All right. Just an extra umph. All right. Little, little small umph. You kind of see here, like my T is a little too close to my H. So let's H. All right. The good thing about this keyboard font, as long as I don't break it up, I'll keep this uh, this roundabout that I just created. So if I select from H, holding down Shift all the way to S, then I could just push the right arrow key. So you can kind of see how it's moving. All right, just to adjust letters, like if you see any other letter. Um, you just want to make sure you select all the letters at once. You don't just want to select one letter. All right. So it's just kind of like little small tweaks right here. All right. Bam. But let me see the settings that I used here just to make sure. The ones I'm talking about. So pool comp 25.25 underlay. Okay, so I didn't use 1.5, I used 1.8 as my so this length here. If you keep it at 2.5 the way they had it, uh, the underlay might stick through. So sometimes you see underlay that's showing on on text. 
you want to hide your underlay. So sometimes you got to go tiny. If you go like five millimeters, you might need to go 1.5 your length. All right. You really don't you really don't want to use any other underlay once when, when you're going small. Okay. For example, edge run. If you put edge run on small text, it's game over. All right. It's game over. That that underlay, that's like the number one thing that's gonna make or break text is your underlay. Okay. Worst case scenario, just remove it everything okay like if you really but i would at least suggest to put center run all right um this font works pretty good for small text hold on what happened all right all right let me get some questions here there's actually real good questions that I see here. Uh, and then Ur Urban Gamer. Yeah, I remember your question about the hat. Um, hey, we got Edwin. Old school friend right there. Glenda on the house. Uh, hold on, let me go up here. Bam, bam. All right, right here. This is a good question right here, right? Any tips for preventing brim of hat from rubbing on machine? Oh, sorry about that. All right, so. Uh, uh, let me make sure I get this question good. All right. Any tips preventing brim of hat? There's some there's some machines that are made. I don't know if they're specifically made for hats, but they don't have that issue. Okay. I think the smaller machine, so you're saying you have a EM1010. That one, you could do hats, uh, but it's gonna rub. Whenever it rubs, you have to you have to watch out for losing registration. But there are machines where that's not a problem. I would say to avoid it, probably uh, certain designs that probably won't won't be good. Just because if it's too if there's too much design on the bottom part close to the brim, you're gonna you're gonna rub you're gonna rub that brim. All right, so kind of maybe if, if you have uh, designs that are narrow, right? Because if a design is real narrow, you could pick it up a tad bit. Like it doesn't have to be all the way down. Um, but if you have something um, yeah, the, the best answer I could get, preventing brim of hand. Really, it's it's a machine thing, okay? It's a machine thing. I've been comparing hats. I've been comparing machines, um, like my Tajima, right? It doesn't even touch nothing. Like I go all the way to the bottom, and it's not even touching nothing. The brim is like good to go. There's nothing. Um, certain designs, all right. With my Ricoma, certain designs, I gotta kind of be uh, looking, making sure I don't lose registration. Uh, but I know for the EM1010, you have to be more cautious on um, on the type of design you have. All right. But I, I don't have anything. The only thing that could prevent it is the type of designs you have. All right. Um, we got VC from Australia. All right. Good to have you here. Uh, let me see. Oh. And then this one, I think I answered your question earlier about the space shuttle. Where do you know where to put your details? It's like a decision. Like, what do you want to keep? What what's what's critical for the design, right? Well, the main thing is you want to make sure you keep 
the details that's going to make it look like your shuttle and kind of minimize stuff. So for example, the, the window, right? The window it looks like a window, but I didn't do it exactly like how the design was. Hold on. Right here, they had four windows, right? I just used two, right? Oh. All right. Hey, Pam, Redondo Beach. All right. They got like the best seafood right there, Redondo Beach. All right. Uh, bam, bam. And then. This is what it's all about right here, all right? Barb hit it right on the head. Testing is important. Everything is about testing. The more you test, the more you're gonna know what works. And that's how you come about your own rules, right? Because you're gonna hear people have their own rules and eventually you're gonna come up with your own rules. Right, Cindy agrees. Test, test, test. That's probably like, 80% of what we're doing here. It's testing, testing, testing. And then by the time you, you get to a customer's job, that's the easy part, okay? By the time you're actually doing customer work, all the hard testing part is over. What you don't wanna do is test with customer apparel, garments, and on their projects, all right? And then, so this patch, the one I have here, eventually I'm gonna patch, I'm gonna with a, a post bed machine. So I got a new, well, it's not even new anymore. I got it back in October, but I got the Texo. Um, I think they're Canadian company. Not sure, good. There's this beast machine. All right, um, appreciate that. Dr. Betty, Betty Gein. All right. Um, and then having some of these issues, all right. I'm pretty sure because with patches, a lot of the big issues is the gaps, all right. So I know just lining stuff up, making sure you don't put too much overlap because if you have too much overlap, you might get some bumps or you're gonna raise your stitch count where it's not really necessary, okay? So even though you wanna control your, your overlaps, you don't wanna put overkill where you're putting too much overlap. Thailand in the house. All right, um, so appreciate this. All right, um, this, this is gonna be a part two cause I'm gonna stitch it out. Uh, I'm going to record it while I'm stitching out. I just didn't want to, uh, two things is I got to do, got to get a cable long enough to run from downstairs. And I didn't want this 20,000 stitches, right? We didn't want to have a whole show just doing one stitch, but I'm going to make a, a, either tomorrow or Wednesday. Okay. Stitch this out and go step by step using the water soluble. So you saw how, when I punched this out. Step by step, I'm gonna like explain every little small detail. But in the beginning of the show, I did show you where I got it from. I got it from Ganold, but you could get it other places too. All right. Um, hey, machine, how you doing? All right, appreciate that. Uh, man, all right, appreciate that, youngster. Yup, always with the good questions. Uh, once I go down. Details. So when I when I go text, all right, text to me. This text, all right, looks sharp. Like it, okay. I go super slow, like five fifty, okay, five fifty on the machine when I go small details. Uh, if I'm going like details with the run stitch, like on the space shuttle for some reason if if i go too fast when it's doing run stitches it'll skip some stitch i, I definitely don't want to skip any stitches 
All right. Those are the two times where I go slow. Uh, other than that, I go. I'm going above like six fifty. Um, and then I seen people use tape on top. Yeah, with certain machines, like you get small machines that are made for more flat type machines. But if you use uh, if you use it for hats, I I I've seen people use tape. So, but the tape is only gonna what the tape is gonna do is just gonna prevent it from like getting um, scuff, but it's still gonna rub, and you can still have the potential to lose registration. All right. Um, all right, we got Aggieland, Texas, in the house. Chrissy, how you doing? Then uh, Cindy, the plastic product. Yeah, that's uh, Ultra Solvi from Ganold. Hey, Audrey in the house. And then, yep, exactly. So I'm going to go step by step how to do this. All right. Maybe I even attach it to the hat with the post bed. All right. So we'll work on this one here. Then I'll post I'll post the design so you could chop it up and uh, dissect it. If you were to put heat backing on, would you apply the under border stitch or apply after? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll just stitch it out, then cut it. No, stitch it out. This is what I would do. Okay, thank you for this question right here. If I were to put heat back, okay, let's say this is a patch. Okay, I would keep it like this. I wouldn't cut it yet. All right, and then, and then put the backing, the heat backing in the back, and then cut it. Now, it'd be a little bit more difficult with these odd shaped ones. Okay. Um, it it's, makes more sense with regular shapes, but if it were if we were using like if we had already used the water soluble, then yeah, put it once it's done here, then put it. Okay, then put it. All right. All right. Do appreciate everybody hanging out today. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, if you're here on the replay. All right, uh, make sure you hit that like. So this is what, episode number 10? So we're, 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 we're still not halfway through, all right? So if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions for any topics, okay? Uh, I do appreciate all your questions, all your comments. And look out for part two of this live, which I'm going to be stitching out and going into details, the whole step process. All right. All right. Till the next time. See you guys on the next one. Peace out, everybody.